happier side of life. The Todd Starnes Commentary. Nichols Elementary School has become the first in Texas to violate the new Merry Christmas law. The grade school in Frisco has banned Christmas trees from their annual winter party. They've also forbidden students from saying Merry Christmas or mentioning any other religious holiday. And if that's not bad enough, the school also banned the colors red and green. Representative Pat Fallon wrote the Merry Christmas law permitting Christmas-themed celebrations, events, and displays in Texas public schools. He says the ban is draconian. The school says they don't want to offend anybody. Well, what about the families who might be offended by not being able to call Christmas Christmas? Unfortunately, there are no criminal penalties for violating the Merry Christmas law. Perhaps an amendment is in order. In lieu of jail time, violators would be subjected to a lump of coal. I'm Todd Stern. Thank you, Todd Starn. Green Durham's Nothing But Truth, probably on AFR Talk. Great to be back with you. Afternoons with Aaron, the name of the segments that we do with our good friend, Pastor Aaron Free, Senior Pastor, Knollwood Church, Mobile, Alabama. Love you, Mobile. Love you more, Fairhope, for all the right reasons. And we now shift gears slightly here, Aaron. Because you know I could talk to about Israel with you for, well, I could talk for the next 24 hours uh, with you about that because of not only your breadth of knowledge but the importance of the issue and the developments of what we're seeing and a very troubling trend of anti-Semitism within the United States. And we're going to be focusing on that at this time tomorrow, actually at the top of the hour tomorrow's show, so tune in for that. Another part. Another thing that we want to talk about is how God can transform, how God can break habitual sin, addictions. And I think about this because I I always think about people trying to do it in their own strength. And we ask why people do what they do, what motivates them. They want to do good, but their flesh (laughs) <laughs> their flesh isn't saved their souls are our souls are but our flesh is our flesh it's going to work against us and at times and so i think it's important to remember that god has the authority and the power to transform our lives because i think we all forget that and underestimate god now i've just said this as you well know i'm not a pastor i'm not a, a versed enough to do apologetics. I'm just a disciple in progress, doing the best I can with my shaved head pointing up to Christ and not down at others, saved by his grace. Let me ask you this. Do we underestimate God's ability to transform our lives, Aaron, in the, in the way of habitual sin and addiction? I, I believe so. I, I think... For a lot of people, they, they come to Christ, and they come to the cross, and they, they bow their knee, and they ask the Lord, you know, forgive me of my sin. They feel clean. They feel free. They're quoting scriptures, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. But then they find out very soon that the real spiritual struggle now begins, because the adversary is... You know, he comes against the saints as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so there's this battle that we're, we face. And for so many believers, Crane, they never get past the cross. They never get past that, that place of repentance uh, and begin to walk free of their old life. And I am justified at the cross, but after that point of justification... I'm called to live a sanctified life. So the cross delivers me from the power of sin, uh, but I still am dealing with the presence of sin in my life. And so I'm, I'm called to walk in the truth of Christ and free myself from what the cross has done for me and move on to maturity. But, but so many people, they don't get past that. They just, you know, stay uh, down in the, in the depths of the pit of despair, and they they never walk in the freedom that the, that the cross has given them. So I'm I'm not advocating you know trying to erase the cross from your life. 
I'm simply saying we've got to move on from that point of repentance at the cross uh, into maturity. And when we return to our sin, it's like a dog going back to his uh, throw-up, if you will. I, I'm not trying to be rude here. It's just that it came upon me uh, because of what I believe Scripture references this, it, it, going back to his sickness in a way. Yet it happens all, all the time. And, there are, and, and certainly in the battlefield of the mind, but also in the practices of it may be alcohol, it may be drug abuse, it may be pornography. But these are things that Christians, like all, are struggling with. And as you said, to break those habits. Now, in the case of addiction, we have some obviously physical addictions there. Arguably, some would look at pornography as a physical addiction, what it does to your brain. And my question to you is, speak to those who are, whether it's impure thoughts, it's the idea of controlling your mind, who are sinning and asking Christ to forgive them. At the same time, they say, this is the last time I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. What advice do you have for people who are really trying to break their sin genuinely and not return to it is there should there be a ritual process and i'm not trying to be i'm not talking about the blood of of a a goat or a lamb no i'm just saying Mm -hmm. should there be a process to it because i'm sure you deal with this as a pastor certainly when people come to you and have these issues absolutely and what i what i share with people crane is that you know, we're called as Christians not to simply be physically pure. We're called to be pure in our minds. Our eyes are to be pure. And so Job tells us, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look lustfully upon a woman. And so, you know, a female can say the same thing. I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully upon a man. And so it's, it's out of covenant relationship that I can, you know, bring the members of my body before God and say, Lord, I make a covenant with, with my body. I, I desire not only to be pure in my mind, but to be pure in my body. And we're, we're called to sexual purity. And so what I uh, do, Crane, you know, everybody has different prayer models and so my prayer model is the tabernacle prayer, and that's just simply taking the, the heavenly tabernacle, which architecturally was given to Moses, the pattern, and he built the earthly tabernacle after the pattern of the heavenly tabernacle. The whole book of Hebrews is, is a story about this, this beautiful tabernacle in, in the wilderness. And so the first place of the tabernacle was the gate. So I come into the gate with thanksgiving in my prayer time. I thank God for all he's done in my life. And then I come into the court. I see the brazen altar, which is a picture of the cross. And I praise the Lord for all he did for me on the cross. He delivered me from sin and bondage and habits and those things. So I enter with thanksgiving. I come into the court with praise. The next piece of furnishing in the outer court is the laver of cleansing. And so every day, Crane, I come before the laver of cleansing, and it was made out of mirrors. So the priest would look, and he would see himself in the mirror. And the Bible says in James that God's Word is like a mirror. We look into the perfect law of liberty, and every day, the Word of God, I look into it. And if there's areas of my life that need correcting, God's Word corrects me. And so I, I cleanse myself daily at the laver in my prayer time. And I I simply say, Lord, if there's something in me that's impure, impure thoughts, impure motivations, uh, wrong-headed thinking, uh, unforgiveness, Lord, cleanse me of those things. So every day as believers, we need to have a time of of personal confession. And so that's all outer court stuff. But we're called to move beyond the outer court into the inner court, where the the candelabra is, the speaking of the Holy Spirit, and the table of showbread, the bread of his presence, where I I come into his word and I partake of the presence of Jesus every day. Then I come to the altar of incense, which is the place of petition. Revelation says the incense 
is the prayers of the saints, and that's where I make my petition to God, and then I end my prayer time in the holy place, where I just sit in His presence and and learn from Him and meditate on His Word. So what keeps a person out of sin? How can a young man keep his way pure? And David says, by taking heed to your commands. So every day we should have a, a daily time in the Word, a daily time of confession, but then move beyond that into a growing relationship and that inner court experience with the Lord in prayer. And that session of confession is not a session of condemnation, beating yourself up. No, but it is saying, Lord, if there's something in me, mm-hmm. as David said, forgive me of my hidden faults. I mean, David got down to the nitty-gritty. Lord, if there's something in me, a blind spot, that, you know, I, I can see the, the big stuff in my life where I'm, I'm blowing it, Lord, in, in, you know, attitude issues or, you know, impure thoughts or something like, you know, that. But David got down to the nitty-gritty and said, Lord, forgive me of my hidden faults, of, of my, my blind spots, Lord. So we want to deal with, with all those issues. And no, we're not beating ourselves up. But we are humbly bowing the knee and saying, Lord, if not by your grace, I mean, if you would hold all of my iniquity against me, I, I couldn't stand. And so I, I thank him for his mercy and his grace. But I move beyond that. All the furnishings in the outer court were made of brass, which speak of judgment. But when we get into the inner court, everything is made out of gold, which speaks of his glory and his presence. So that's where God is leading us, is into this wonderful, intimate relationship with him. That's where the real change takes place when I find myself in his presence. It's really interesting, Aaron, because you're going through this process of getting closer and really living what God is is outlining for your life and making that decision to live. And, And there are times where we either minimize one part of the confession and or or maximize part of that confession of staying in that sin, staying in that circle of uh, of sin, and make room for it. I, I think back to when I prayed about the fact that I used to like to do certain things, like go out and have uh, glasses of wine and go to bars and hang out with my friends, but also, you know, be around. I was a single guy. And even in saying that, I mean, how awful is that? Just like, oh, great, that, you're rationalizing it, because you can rationalize a whole lot of things. And I, please take what I'm outlining here as a general statement to other things that you could take the paradigm, if you will, and apply it to other aspects, uh, other challenges that you may be facing. And I prayed on this after I had uh, met with, a local pastor, and talked about this, and he talked about the cross and bringing it to the cross and asking Christ. And I had an experience where my thoughts were repulsed by the idea of consuming alcohol. It made me sick to my stomach, the very thought of it. The very thought of being in an environment like that, I didn't like it. It would be like, if you went to a smoky environment and you smoked and you said, oh, no, the very thought of that and hanging out in a, in a particular environment, it, it repulsed me. And really looking at the person I was and the person that God has transformed me to be, not in a way of thinking I'm morally superior or self-righteousness in any way. No, absolutely not. But there is a transformation, and you're speaking to that transformation, Aaron. Do we fight that transformation at times when we're sitting there not believing that God has more for us, that sin is actually more fun and satisfying than what God has outlined for us? Well, I think it's rooted in a disbelief in who we are in Christ, Crane. Mm-hmm. And at that outer court brazen altar, which speaks of the cross, what I'm praising God for is who I am in Christ and who Christ is in me. Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what's amazing to me about this Christian life is that, and it's it's hard for us to even proclaim this, but I am the righteousness of, of God in Christ Jesus. I've been made righteous with his righteousness through his blood. 
And so at the cross every day, I praise Jesus for what the Word says the blood does for me. So the blood of Christ has forgiven me. The blood of Christ has made me righteous with his righteousness. And I tell you this, man, by the time I, I'm done proclaiming what the Word says the blood of Christ has done for me through the cross, man, there's a freedom that comes to my life. Mm-hmm. But if I just stay in that place and pity myself, oh, what a worm am I? I'm such a low-down sinner. I'll, I'm just, I've heard a lot of Christians say, you know, I'm, I'm just a lowly sinner trying to get to heaven, and I'll never overcome these old bondages and habits. That's not biblical. You know, the cross calls us to be free from sin and to live, to live in complete freedom in Christ. So that is what, hopefully, we're all aiming for. Amen. And if you're just joining the show and you've just caught the show first time, this is why we have Pastor Aaron Free on every week at this time. And what a blessing it is because you've, you've painted the picture and once again reminded us, first and foremost, going to the Father, going to Him and reminding ourselves of what He has done for us through the blood of Jesus. Tell me something, Aaron. Would you be all right with saying a prayer for those to come to Christ? We have had some folks sign on uh, despite my confusing presentation and was wondering if you would do that for us. Absolutely. To the break. Go, brother. All right. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that uh, for those that believe in you, that all the blessings of Abraham are passed down to those who believe through Christ. So I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for what the Word says your blood does for us. We are forgiven. Uh, Lord, you have uh, made us rich with your riches through Christ. You have uh, given us healing and wholeness. Lord, I thank you for uh, your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that uh, your mercies are new every morning. I thank you, Lord, that when we come into your presence, Lord, your goodness uh, shines upon us. So, God, I pray for these that have, that have written in today, God. I pray, God, that you'll open their hearts 